Hi everyone, Max NG7M here, and I've been dragging my feet on this video, but there's been a, a number of questions on the forum for the RF kit B26 RF 2K Plus on uh, whether or not you need to drill the chassis or the case. Uh, sounds like some guys um, are a little confused on that. Um, this is a kit, so um, Reinhardt's made it very clear that he wants to keep it a kit for a lot of reasons, right? So you will need to drill the chassis. Uh, there's four holes you would need to drill. I mean, just for a basic installation, you're gonna have to um, either drill four, four holes and use the self-tapping hardware that comes with the kit, with mine anyway, early August when mine was shipped, or um, you could drill the case and tap the holes and use different hardware. So this is the way I did it. Um, I wanted to be um, you know, relatively as professional as I could get. And I've had a number of pictures that I've already posted on the forum, so a lot of you guys have probably seen this. But I wanted to go through some of the other details. Maybe other guys that have ordered their amplifier kit can come along and see exactly how I did it. And there'll be always some distractors that say, I went over the top, whatever. Uh, but if I don't go over the top, then I've got distractors that say, you didn't go over the top. So, you know, I'll make constructive comments in the uh, description. I'll also post some links and things to some of the things that I bought to complete the finished work. And I'll try to touch on the things which do not come in the kit and I give you some good ideas uh, what to expect on finishing off the kit. And uh, you, obviously you'll get some good pictures of the powder work I had done and how I drill, drilled and tapped and did some countersinks on the case cover uh, and on the front panel. So. Uh, with that, let's just get to some pictures here. Uh, I don't think this is going to take very long. Uh, I'm just pulling up my web browser to my photo gallery that I have. And uh, it's right here. I'll make me a little smaller here. And so again, you'll see these links as usual that you've seen before. And the, the main link that I'm in is my B26 RF2K area. And I'm going in the case covered, drilled, tapped, and finished area right here. And uh, I, I'm going to rip through, I've got three subfolders in here. One is countersink on the amp cover. Uh, I added a ground post and then the powder coating from a local guy here in Utah, in Layton, Utah, actually, and I'll, I'll show his website. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about the uh, countersinking on the cover. So this is, uh, these are some pictures from early on when I received the amplifier and the case holes are already drilled in the cover as you'll see so there's four holes two on each side on the bottom of the case and I actually used a single fluted countersink that I had on hand I would do that a little differently um, you know so it, it was kinda rough on the countersink but it worked fine after the powder coating so these just a couple pictures here on that um, you've got uh, you know, move me around a little bit here. So I, I just, I have a little drill press. I did the countersinking on the four holes that already existed. And uh, and so you can see with the hardware that comes with it, there is actually, and I believe it's stainless steel hardware. This is a, a three millimeter uh, M3 or 3M countersink screws. And um, this is what I anticipated doing before I sent the case off to be powder coated. Later on, I purchased some actual five fluted countersink bits because I, I like doing this stuff, so I'd end up using this hardware anyway. And, um, you know, in hindsight, I would have used a countersink bit like this quarter inch bit right here to countersink the cover. Um, but I didn't, you know, this was quite a while later when I got around to countersinking the Whiskey 4 Yankee November faceplate, which I'll talk about too, and I've talked about in other videos. So this is a little hardware setup here. These countersink bits that'll come in handy on other projects were acquired from Amazon at the time. I think I paid six, 17 bucks. And the nice thing here is that they came with a nice countersink, or excuse me, a, a hole punch, a spring hole punch, which I'll show you later too. So for 18 bucks, I thought it was worth it. I'll end up using this um, hole punch. It works really nice. It snaps a, a hole right where you want it on aluminum very easily. And so you can get your drill bit in there to drill the hole. 
um, for tapping too. So jumping around a little bit, but I thought I'd show you that. Who knows if the price is the same? I pulled this up as of this video, at 17 bucks uh, with free shipping on eligible orders. Blah blah blah. You might be able to find some similar items. Um, for example, here's one here. Um, it looks like it's not too bad, and um, I assume these are 82 degree countersink bits, so this would probably work too. So back to the pictures. Um, I'll go back to um, the uh, second area. So I only had three pictures there. Uh, I actually added a ground post, by the way, on the back here. So here's a picture of the back of the amplifier and I put it down to the right and a little bit lower than the uh, circuit breaker for the uh, AC input on the amplifier. I know some guys are mixed on this. I, I wanted a ground post because I like to uh, you know, tie everything together with single point ground and bond cases together. Um, that's just the way I roll. So some guys won't use a ground so it's up to you. Um, and let's see the third breakout here. This is a quick picture of the a powder coating job. This is actually a picture from the guy I used. He, he, he has a he's a one man shop right out of his house, so your mileage may vary. I've had a I've used him on another project and been very happy. His name is Brad, and he is in Layton, Utah. Um, so he actually took my W4YN faceplate and matched the uh, wrinkle code as best he could and I think he did a great job and so this is a picture from his iPhone that he sent me specifically so you can see that the uh, wrinkling on the powder coating I had done on my case is very similar to the uh, W4YN um, uh, you know plastic front panel which I'll we'll show more of that so let me show he, he has a Facebook page and so if you just um, Google or go to Facebook and look for Utah Powder Works Whiskey Echo Romeo Kilo Sierra. Um, you'll find his website. Drop him a note. Um, I paid around 50 bucks, but he's local. He'd be completely open to having you ship his case cover to him and working with you on a custom powder coat. Very happy with the powder coating job. It's very tough, very thin coating. Um, he'll do whatever you want, you know, any color you want. I had a kind of a satin black, again, to match the uh, faceplate. So Utah Powder Works is who I used. So let's get back to the pictures. Now that I've covered that, let's get to the main area on the case cover drilled, tapped, and finished. Okay, I'm just, there's a little bit of variance here on the order of the pictures. Um, and so I'll just go through these and spend a little time on more than others. Um, here is the back of the uh, front panel and you can see that I drilled um, actually three holes on the front panel across the bottom because I tapped and counter did a countersink job on the front panel and all the hardware I'm using was obtained on um, Amazon so I'm using three millimeter black countersunk screws all the way around because I wanted a really nice tidy finished job and I'm happy with the outcome I don't, I don't think anybody's gonna argue with the uh, um, look of the outcome here so just some pictures again bottom of the panel and this was getting ready to drill and tap that front panel from whiskey for Yankee November Tim um, so all three of those holes the other holes on the front panel already were countersunk um, or rather drilled from the factory. But I think they were countersunk too because there was silver hardware. Um, so here is the placement of the W4YN um, front panel uh, where I wanted the only additional holes, again I'm repeating myself, were across the bottom. So there's three holes that were countersunk and tapped in there. And I used very short bolts because the, the three screws uh, for these hex head bolts along the bottom are only long enough to go through the front panel so they they are not functionally there's nothing to tap into on the front panel below those top four holes so um, 
I can take off the front panel and the faceplate will remain on the aluminum or alumini, uh, alu, aluminum um, front panel with the front cover removed. It worked out nice, I thought. Um, so these four holes here um, on the top of the front panel and right here where we're drilled in the exact holes that were already part of the front panel when the amplifier was shipped as a kit. And they are the functional uh, holes that drill into the um, and tapped into the side um, stock on the front of the amplifier. So here you can see the left side. So I'd matched everything. I drilled and tapped the front plastic panel and then I just use a sharpie to blacken out the white area. Uh, on the uh, a note on the power switch, um, come to find out, Tim actually designed the front panel to just have you put the power power switch on the outside of the front panel. Uh, I I didn't know that. And I'm actually happy with what I did. Is I actually kind of machined out um, using a square bit on a drill press the area just underneath here, and I put the power switch underneath the W4YN front panel and I like that functionally it's very tight um, and if if I decide to remove the the uh, W4YN panel the switch stays in place as intended originally on the aluminum faceplate so it's up to you you could just put it right through this hole and have the switch and it would look really nice too on the outside here so just a note on that um, so there's the front of it you can see the three holes right here one two and three and that's holding the faceplate on the aluminum front panel. Um, the other four holes are where it's drilled and tapped to functionally hold the front panel right, right on, top, you know, right on the front of the amplifier. Um, so, oh, as a as a note here, while I've been yapping, the uh, the timeout on the amplifier went off. So, a little digression there. So here's the front of the amplifier mounted without the case cover on so you've got six screw or er, um, seven screws one two three four five six seven drilled and all tapped and just showing some of the finish here left side uh, bottom in the middle there's the power switch the way I did it um, it was a little more work but it's actually underneath the front panel there on the top oh and so jumping around a little bit so here is the powder coated case from Utah Powder Works and I made sure and used a Dremel and um, gently removed the powder coat. It's very tough that powder coating is. It's amazing how tough that is because I wanted to make a get. I wanted to make sure I had a, po a positive ground connection where I bolted the case onto the amplifier. So now we're we're looking at through some some pictures of the actual cover. Um, moving on from the front panel, and I'm just showing how I removed the uh, powder coating there for the holes. Um, and so there's the case just sitting on the ground here in my shack with um, the powder coating removed in preparation of mounting. You can see it's just a beautiful powder coat job. And here is the powder coat, coat um, work on the countersink that I did originally with that single fluted countersink. I'd, I'd do it different as I mentioned before. And just some shots of that. And here is the uh, um, the uh, um, oh good grief it's like the uh, you know the the uh, um, drill bit tap um, to, to tap the hole so you you get the the point on the case where you can actually put the drill bit why is the name of this thing eluding me it'll come back um, and so you can see you just push that in where you want it and it's spring loaded and it will uh, the, the hole punch right it'll pop in a nice divot right in the aluminum so when you remove the cover um, you're ready to drill the hole prior to tapping and I had the uh, uh, Whiskey 4 Echo Echo Yankee off the top of my head um, I found one of the uh, um, Tektronix uh, scope um, carts and it worked out really nice because I could take the straps in that scope cart and I could strap the cover down tight and find out you know, get everything positioned where or, or I wanted to, and then I went around and used that hole punch to pop in the uh, exact area where I was going to drill for the uh, bolts on the cover. And so I'm just showing that where I've 
jumped around and done that. Here you can see the strap here on the uh, case. I mean, you could easily do that without the um, Tektronix carpet. It sure made it easy. It was nice. I pulled everything down tight before I did the drilling uh, for the case cover holes. And here you can see without the case, you can see that nice divot that's going to be used for drilling. Um, this is a nice tool. I mean, I guess if you had a full-size drill press, you could um, get the whole amplifier in the drill press. But I used um, a tool. Again, this is available on Amazon. It's called a Gator. Or, excuse me, it's from Gator Tools. And this is actually an SAE um, jig here, which just, I mean, it's, it's hard to keep that drill bit square if you're going to use a hand drill. I used a, a, a um, cordless drill. And by the way, for three millimeter um, taps for the screws I used to keep it metric hardware, this is a 2.5 millimeter bit. And I used this Gator jig just to keep me honest on trying to get a 90 degree square hole drilled through the uh, stock. So um, that's available on Amazon or wherever. Google that up, you'll find this jig. Again, it's very handy for other projects too. So I ponied up. Um, this was around 22 bucks. It wasn't cheap because it's a hardened um, steel, right? So the drill bit won't cut into it. So here you can see how I, I used that. Once I started the hole, I used that little jig to keep me honest and get the tapping hole drilled through. And um, this here, again, available on Amazon for, it was like less than 10 bucks. Um, a T-handle, which I've got other ones. So this is a tap, an M3 tap, metric tap. And I used the jig again, right, to make sure I um, stayed square as I started tapping through the stock, the aluminum stock on the amplifier. Because if you if you get started skewampus, you can, you can actually break your uh, tapping bit. So you want to get in there square and tap that out. I used a little dab of, of oil on the bit. Um, just because I'm kind of uh, anal about this stuff. And uh, tapped all four holes. And now you can see the finished product here. You can see that the, the uh, actual beveled and countersunk black screws, three millimeter screws holding the case on. And I, I think it looks very professional, beautiful. Now, one note on, let me kind of go through these here. It's just showing you everything. You can jump on the my photo album website and download the original high-res pictures if you want but it'll give you a good idea. Um, I don't know if I have the right side rear I wanted to talk about um, and you can see I took these pictures prior to putting in the uh, ground post too. Just jumping around a little bit, a little digression there. Um, shot at the front again and I'm gonna jump through these. Um, so here you get a good shot of the powder coating as compared to the uh, um, W4YN panel and it looks like I got a few little goobers there maybe I didn't clean off on the front panel W4YN front panel um, again some shots there kind of duplicating some stuff here um, there's the amp oh okay so let's talk about this on as of amplifier shipping in early August 2018 um, Reinhardt moved the internal heat sink forward and so there's space for a, a shroud for the rear fan and um, this is one caveat which I'm, I'm not very happy about here you've got to be very careful here the only thing you're tapping through here is um, you know about an eighth inch of aluminum you don't have the full um, you know half inch stock post on the right rear because you're you know, behind here is the um, fan shroud that's internal right behind the, the main heat sink. So you'll have to drill through here and be careful as you drill into that fan shroud. Um, it's a little trickier on this side, the right rear of the case, okay? And you'll have to be very gentle with the tapping job you do with this particular screw because if you tighten it too hard, right, you're going to strip that aluminum because you're not going through a half inch um, aluminum stock. The other three, you, you can crank them right down tight, but be careful here. I actually ordered some countersink screws um, that haven't arrived yet, and I'm going to pop that, you know, they're blind nuts, that I'll actually drill that out a little more because I want a really tight fit, and I'll put that blind nut right in the eighth inch. It's like eighth inch or 
I don't know how many millimeters, maybe, you know, four millimeters, maybe three and a half millimeter stock um, on this right rear side. So uh, this is a kit, right, guys? Don't expect to, to have everything, you know, tidy and exact how you want it because there's madness or reasoning behind the madness of making sure it is classified as a kit amplifier uh, because Reinhardt's shipping these all over the world and especially in the states here um, he would have to deal with FCC type acceptance and also the uh, input power ridiculous rule that the FCC has um, currently on the amount of power required to get full legal output so he purposely require some drilling and tapping to make sure that this thing is designated as a kit. And as far as meeting FCC um, sprays, transmissions, and everything else, um, it's it's very clean. And hopefully I'll get around to a video of showing my measurements there. Anyway, digression there. The right rear hole will take a little tender loving care. And um, I mean, you can slap this all together, right? You don't have to have the power coating. You don't have to go out and buy the tools. You don't have to do any of that. You can just put it together, you can drill the holes, use the self-tapping um, Phillips head screws that come with the kit and put it all together and away you go. Um, I went a little over the top, I wanted to the, everything to look very professional here. So um, this is the, the left rear side and this hole does go through the heavy stock so you can really, you know, once you get this tapped, you can really tighten it down nice. Um, just some more shots of the amplifier, shot at the back, Again, it looks great, I think. Um, I was a little confused, and I've mentioned this before. I actually, so there's there's an empty fan shroud inside the amplifier. Um, the hardware I bought here are 90 millimeter, 3 millimeter, or 90 millimeters long screws. And so I actually have two empty shrouds, and I just left it in place. Um, I haven't got around to cutting the bolts and you know, making this a little shorter. I probably won't. I mean, I'm happy with the bigger cavity here. Um, you could argue that it, the fan would have an easier time drawing the air, and it might even be just a hair um, quieter. Who knows? I don't know. So I have two fan shrouds. Um, and here's another shot of that. So right inside the case here, you're going to have another empty fan shroud. And there's that, you know, be careful on this hole right here, as I've um, made very clear. And that's it. So, um, you know, back to the case and cover drill, tapped and finished. Um, have fun with the amplifier. I've been making a lot of cues on it. I've made several hundred CW cues, lots of FT8 cues, and I'm uh, very happy with how quiet it is. I've, I've had several solid state amplifiers, and uh, this one is very, very quiet, even on the higher voltage on the fans. Um, so get on the air, make some cues. Um, you don't have to go over the top like I did on the finish work here, but some guys will want to do that. I wanted a very professional looking finish and I'm happy with the results. So 73, get on the forum, ask questions, um, expect this to be a kit, um, expect to do some research, expect to um, actually get your hands dirty, do some soldering, drilling, tapping. Uh, it's kind of fun getting back to some roots there on a, you know, it's probably 95% finished amplifier. But um, personalize the amplifier and make it yours. 73 for now, guys, and I'll get this video posted. Give me the thumbs up. Leave positive comments. And um, be reasonable and be objective on the forum. Do your homework before you ask questions. Um, it, it, it's, you know, it's not perfect. It's a work in progress. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. You'll learn a lot as you build the amplifier and start to use it. So I'm excited to get on the air. F next weekend is the CQ Worldwide. Uh, RTTY contest, and I'm going to really work the amp out good this next weekend Weekend uh, in the RTTY contest. So, hope to work some of you guys there. Oh, and a call out to uh, Kilo Uniform 7 Tango. Um, I worked in a CWT, and so, uh, you know, it was kind of fun knowing that there was a 2K F, or a, 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 a FA, a 2K plus amplifier on both ends of those QSOs this last Wednesday. So, um, good to work, KU17. I know he's been active on the forum too. So, 73 guys, and um, have a good rest of your weekend. And hopefully, I'll get another video um, up. Oh, we'll we'll see how motivated I am on the Esprit transmissions. I'm gonna, you know, try to uh, duplicate some of the tests that the ARRL would do um, with my attenuators here and uh, spectrum analyzer and some of that. So, I just have to get motivated. 73 guys, have fun. Bye.